Good evening and welcome to the January 15th regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Education. I'd like to ask everybody in the audience uh, if they would turn off their cell phones. When we have the TV feed going, cell phones interfere even if you have them on vibrate. So if you'd turn those off, that would be wonderful. Our first order of business is roll call. So uh, Angela, could you do the roll call for All us? All right, President Singer. Here. Vice President Branstad, I'm here. Secretary McFarland is out this evening. Treasurer for C. Here. Member Baker. Here. Member Blazy. Here. And Member Friedel. Here. All right, six out of seven. Great, thank you. Moving into item 2.0, we have the consent agenda. We have approval of the meeting minutes from December 18th. We have the following persons recommended for employment. For the 2017-18 school year, we have uh, two folks, Marcy Adams and Marissa Precor. And the following staff members have announced their resignations. Those are listed in your agenda. Item 2.4, approval of the payment of the school system's bills for the month of November as listed in the check registry. Um, and those totaled the amount of $5,546,738. And item 2.5, legal invoice payments. Approval is requested to authorize um, legal payments of $2,200. And? And on the next page. Ah, uh, gotcha. <laughs> okay. okay. All right, I would uh, entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. I've got two items for the legal. I've got a 22. Oh, all right. You've got uh, Thrun Law Firm and Thrun Law Firm. Thrun Law Firm. Right. All right. 15. All right. So we're approving two law firm bills, uh, one for $2,200 and the other from Thrun for $1,578.99. Thank you, Patrick. Yep. All right. I move we approve consent agenda items 2.1 through 2.5. Support. Great. Uh, moved by Angela, support by Patrick. We'll move into Board of Education matters. Oh, I'm sorry. <coughs> there you go. Um, is there any uh, discussion on the consent agenda? All right, we'll move into a vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. All right. Consent agenda is approved. Now we will move into the Board of Education matters and presentations to the board. Mr. Sherrill. We have our January Shining Stars and the first person we'd like to recognize is Renee Seagram. And if you'll bear with me today, I've got quite the head cold so I can hear you all very well, but I can't hear myself. So if I misspeak, you'll know why. Um, Ms. Seagreen began her MPS employment in 1997 as a paraprofessional handling special education paperwork and supervising in school suspension students at Central Intermediate School. In 2001, Renee began her career in the MPS business office as an office technical professional doing accounts payable. Renee was nominated for the Shining Star by the MPS co-worker. Among her comments were the following. Renee is a caring and conscientious employee who goes the extra mile to ensure that the district will meet all audit standards, but also works with employees to reach that goal. Renee serves as the first face of the business office, welcoming fellow employees and outside visitors to, into our building. This is an important task as it's critical that the business office visitors feel welcomed. She gives back to MPS by volunteering on her lunch hour, as well as taking vacation time each week to be a lunchbox learner volunteer. Hey. She also volunteers to take back the pop cans from the employee lounge that fund our administrative beverage fund. I believe that Renee is deserving of the Shining Star Award. Congratulations, Renee. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Renee. Thank you. Thank you. Our second Shining Star for January is Jody Winkle Cook. Jody would join me. As she's coming up, I'll read about Jody. Jody began her employment with Midland Public Schools in March of 2012 as a speech language pathologist in the Special Services Department. During her seven years with MPS, she has been a member of the Jefferson Middle School team working with the Huskies. 
Jody got her Bachelor of Science degree from Central Michigan University, go Chippewas, <laughs> in Communication Disorders in 1998 and her Master's of Arts degree in Speech Language Pathology. Jody was nominated for a Shining Star by the MPS Parent, who said, Jody attended the Music and More fundraiser on November 2nd. Jody does not have any children that attend Jefferson Middle School, but she wanted to visit and watch some of the students that she works with. Jody's commitment to her students and extra time outside of her responsibilities as a speech and language pathologist are admirable, an example of a model teacher who truly teaches, who truly cares for each of her students. I have worked with Jody both as a parent and as an educator. Collaborating with her is a special because she would do anything to help a child feel successful. She's always kind to her students and understands how a disability can make things difficult for her students. She works very hard to get around a disability while respecting the student as an individual. Congratulations, Jody. Congratulations, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Don't feel shut out. We do this to everybody. Maybe <laughs> <coughs> right, let me do this first before you start. Absolutely. Okay. Hey, Craig, if you want to come up and join me too, your stunt guy in the screen, but if you'd come around, that would work real well. <laughs> before um, our, our first uh, presentation today is the Alden B. Dow House, and we are presenting a certificate to Craig because what a great partner they are, and I think Craig has been a big piece of that. So it's a certificate of recognition for all of the programs. You're probably going to hear about them tonight, but I'm going to mention a few of them for you, and hopefully I don't miss any. But they work with us on the Chemist and the Architect fourth grade program, the International Baccalaureate Class Theory of Knowledge, the seventh grade writing initiative, the Young Writer Studio for middle school students, and many, many more, I'm sure. So wow. congratulations, and we're glad to have them as a partner. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Craig. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. And Craig, are you introducing the group? Are you starting it? Or am I? Marilyn Brooks. Marilyn is. I wasn't sure which one's <laughs> going to take the lead on that. So all yours, Marilyn. Please make sure the mic's turned on when you. I want to begin. My name is Marilyn Brooks, and I want to begin by thanking the Board of Education and Mr. Sherrill for the opportunity to speak to you tonight about a local treasure that we have in Midland that has become an important partner in developing programming for elementary, middle, high school students, and even teacher professional development. I think we are very fortunate to have the Alden B. Dow Home and Studio and the staff and Craig on our side as we provide programming that supports our curriculum and our need to grow our teachers and our students. Mm -hmm. I first became familiar with the Alden B. Dow Home and Studio when I was teaching humanities at Dow High School and we used to take our students there for a field trip and it was a fabulous two hour experience in this magnificent facility tucked right off of Main Street that many people in Midland have probably never even visited. And I always left saying, I wish I could spend more time there. <laughs> um, and then I retired in 2010 and found a way to spend more time there. Um, and so I, I appreciate being a volunteer at the home and studio, but what I have, have noticed over the years since I've been volunteering is their continued commitment to saying, what else can we do? What can we do next? How can we serve the students? How can we make this an experience that is meaningful for them and for teachers? And even into, in recent years, what can we do to support teachers? So it's really a privilege to take some time to talk about those things tonight. Now, I'm aware that we need to restrict our comments. I could go on forever, but I'm uncharacteristically <laughs> controlled tonight. Um, but I have I've brought along a team of experts. They're laughing back there. Um, but I've brought along a team of experts to talk about it. I have students, I have teachers, and of course, Craig, um, to give us the background on the home and studio. I was pleased to see in Mr. Shero's um, <coughs> newsletter that went out this morning that he included this quote, the soul without imagination is what an observatory would be without a telescope. 
And I think one of the things that we find with repeated student experiences at the home and studio is that because it is such an extraordinary architectural um, site, and because Mr. and Mrs. Dow believed in cultivating imagination and creativity, we have a venue for sparking that in our students. Um, and so I'm going to turn it over now to Craig to give you some background on Mr. and Mrs. Dow and the home and studio. And then we will talk about the programs in the chronological order in which they were developed. So we'll talk about the fourth grade program, the high school IB program, the seventh grade writing program, the writer's studio, and then the teacher's workshop. So introducing Craig McDonald, who is the executive director of the Alden V. Dow Home and Studio and the executive director of the Alden and Veda Dow Creativity Foundation. <laughs> it's hard for me to clap. Great. Well, thank you so much for uh, acknowledging the Home and Studio and the great partnerships we have with Midland Public Schools. It's always an honor to work with new students, new teachers, new administrators, and, um, and beyond, looking at how we can assist Midland Public Schools and the wonderful things that they're doing for our community. Um, at the end of Veda Dow's life, she wanted to take this home and studio, the things that were in it, the rich history that the Dow's created, and wanted to put it back to the community, believing it was the community of Midland that created their wonderful life. And her words were, I want it shared. I don't know what that means, but I think you can figure that out. So together with the Alden Dow family, with the community, with our incredible staff, our incredible volunteers, which are more than half retired Midland Public School teachers, uh, which is outstanding. We are allowed to use this as a catalyst to teach young people about their own innate gifts and talents and how they can take those and take them into the future for bright futures for themselves. It's an honor to be able to use the words of Alden Dow, the history, connections, historical connections with Frank Lloyd Wright, Buckminster Fuller, and many others, to again teach young people about their own passions, the things that they'll be able to achieve in their lifetime. Um, with Midland Public, um, as part of our the gift back to the community, the foundation does all of our K programming uh, free of charge. Uh, a bus fund was established several years ago, realizing that busing is one of our biggest issues as we fight budgets. Everything we develop is always curriculum based. We don't want to add to the plate of what Midland Public School already has to do. We want to help them with what they're required and what they're passionate about teaching young people. And so everything is curriculum based. Um, we're really using hands on activities to develop critical thinking skills, certainly part of our STEM uh, curriculum, part of our IB curriculum, to engage young people in learning, to get them passionate and excited about whatever they innately are, are interested in. Um, it is just such a pleasure to work with uh, MPS on a multitude of projects. We started about 20 years ago once we got the home and studio in order and we invited Midland Public to have a curriculum meeting. We said, come on over, have the whole day, we'll even give you lunch, but we want one hour to show you what incredible ties to history, to literature, to science, to art, to all these areas that are so important to us in our basic education, and we want to help you with anything that we can help you with. So it has been an honor and a privilege to do that for 20 years uh, with MPS. So thank you for tonight and acknowledging this partnership. It is now my pleasure to, um, to bring up Tom Veneman, a retired fourth grade teacher from Midland Public Schools. Craig said that wouldn't be a hard act to follow, but boy, that's a lot of stuff. Um, in my teaching at, in Midland Public Schools, much of my time was spent in fourth grade, and so I was privileged enough to go to the Alden Dow House many, many times, as well as the H.H. Dow Museum. Um, and I guess, you know, there are a lot of different things that kind of stick in my mind about um, the tour and just what it, uh, what it meant to kids and also to the teachers. And as Craig said, it was uh, free of charge, which is, you know, you can't beat that, that bargain. Um, but the one thing that um, would always happen is we come in, the kids would get a little bit of history about um, the, the Dow family, um, and then kind of um, move towards Aldemy Dow. And they always, we would always move down into the submarine room, which is, of course, fascinating in itself. And um, they would talk about um, 
the facilitator would talk about um, what it would be like to be an architect. And so somebody was always going to be Alda Dow. And then there were a couple of kids uh, designated to be the husband and wife for, um, to learn about um, what they would want in a home. And so they talked about what was necessary, um, the different resources that would be necessary for a home, um, the natural, the capital, the human resources. Um, then also talking about wants and needs. And so they got a lot of that before they even started moving into the tour. Um, I guess one of the things that kind of always captured my attention, and I went many, many times, but I still love to go because I always learned something new every time I went. But um, every corner you went around, there was something new, something to capture the kids' attention. Um, and you know, in one part, there's um, a room where the archives are, and up on the wall, there are um, mechanical um, toys, um, ones that Alden B. Dow would have there, um, a train going through, just things to really spark the imagination. Um, and then moving in a little bit further, you would find um, quotes on the wall. You would find some of the other things, and even a game that Alden B. Dow designed. Um, kids were just fascinated. Um, the tour created excitement, wonder, creative um, stimulation. Um, they learned about being an entrepreneur. They learned about being a philanthropist. Um, the final activity that the kids would do um, would be, um, you can see kind of the whiteboard, but it was um, a magnetic board. And what they would do is they would have a, um, a, an assignment where they would get um, the people that they were going to build a house for. Um, and they were going to design this as a group of three or four kids. And what they would do is they would take the different things um, that were requested by the family. Um, it might be a family of three. It might be a family of four. They might have certain hobbies um, and create a home for them. Um, so they got a chance to do that for a number of minutes and then share that. Um, and it's just so fascinating <laughs> to watch them work and see how they um, were able to um, share their ideas and, and work through different um, disagreements that they might have. Um, at the end, they would share their design as a group. And that was kind of a fun thing, too, because um, I think that sparked, I don't know about you, but I, I remember as a kid wanting to design homes. You know, it's something where you draw, you draw your dream home. And this gave them a chance to do that. Um, I guess, you know, when I think of this trip, I think it's one of those trips that I always look forward to. It's one of those trips that um, was an amazing trip because kids would always come back being very, very excited about it and talking about some of those things that you need to talk about anyway, the resources, the uh, entrepreneurs and whatever. It was all done within that program and it was something where the kids were um, extremely excited about it. I had a chance to escort some fourth graders on a couple of those tours, and they usually had two questions. Number one, can we play hide and seek? <laughs> that is a fabulous house to play hide and seek in. And number two, I want to buy this house. How much is it? <laughs> it the International Baccalaureate Program, um, when we implemented that in the middle and public schools as a diploma program, we added a course called the Theory of Knowledge, which is beyond the, the boundaries of any singular discipline in our existing curriculum. And the foundational question of the theory of knowledge is, how do we know what we know? Um, and so that fits perfectly into some of the philosophies and theories that Mr. Dow had. He's very well published in creativity and exploring knowledge. And so it became a wonderful connecting point for our theory of knowledge students. And it started out as the occasional field trip for theory of knowledge students. Then it turned into they come to the home and studio once a week for, for a semester. It's a year-long course. Now it's expanded to the students go to the home and studio once a week all year. And so it's a fabulous support. And that opportunity gives students field trips in the local community. They take them to the Edsel Ford home uh, in St. Clair Shores so they get some architectural comparison. But the activities that have been designed to support the IBTOK program are quite remarkable. In addition, the IB um, adds the art program and a need to have a gallery, a display in the spring as part of the accountability for the IB art program, and the home and studio hosts that art, IB art exhibit. If you haven't had a chance to check that out, I hope you will this spring. It's better for you to hear about these programs from Sammy L. Neshef, who is a student at Dow High School in the TOK program, and Sammy has come to talk to us about the TOK program at the home and studio. Hi, 
My name is Samuel Meshif. I am a senior at Dow High, and I am an IB Diploma candidate. As an IB Diploma candidate, you have to take the class of Theory of Knowledge. <coughs> oh. um, and in this class, we discover and analyze the question, how do we know what we know? And we do that through some guiding principles known as the learner profile traits. And because of our partnership with the Alden B. Dow Home and Studio, we use Mr. Dow as our life, real life example to learn about these traits, such as being a communicator. And what I love most about this partnership with Alden B. Dow Home and Studio is the variety of activities we do. We're able to study documents from Mr. Dow's archives travel places around town, such as the Dome House by Robert Schwartz, and even the Herbert and Grace Dow House. And we even, again, like Ms. Brooks said, we went down to Detroit, down to the Etzel Ford House. And throughout all of our visits, we always connected them back to these learner profile traits. I would love to explain each lesson in great depth. However, I cannot do it to time restraints. Mm. <laughs> Nevertheless, I really <coughs> encourage you all to come to our Theory of Knowledge classes uh, open house at the Aldemy Dow Home and Studio on Wednesday, January 17th from 4.30 to 6 p.m. At the open house, members from my entire class will be highlighting the lessons we got to explore during our time at the Home and Studio. Overall, this great partnership and the great experts at the Home and Studio, Mr. McDonald and Mr. Woods, help me feel more united with my classmates and help me understand our class concepts through real life experience. It has truly made me a more aware and independent learner and I would love for you all to hear more about it on Wednesday. Hi, I'm Mary Zeitler, seventh grade English teacher at Jefferson. I'm talking to you today about the seventh grade writing experience. It's a field trip for hundreds of seventh graders every year. It's a one of a kind writing experience in an incredibly creative place. The kids find inspiration in the two hours that they are there in varied ways. Um, a prom dress that's set on the desk or the music or sets on bed, the music that's playing in the room or a painting or a particular sculpture in one of the rooms or maybe the light coming through a window or what they see outside of the window. Uh, there's a passport and some suitcases in the guest room. So I've had a, a young man write a, a poem about unit blocks before. So the <laughs> architecture sometimes inspires. The docents who are there are very enthusiastic and knowledgeable and they share facts about Mr. Dow and the house and the family. Sometimes that inspires writing. It really could be anything and that's the power of this field trip. Not only do the topics vary, but the genres vary as well. A lot of poetry is written by my students, but some essays, some mysteries, detective stories, journals, all sorts of things. Really, the writing that comes out at, out of the experiences is varied as the colors and the shapes and the textures of the home and studio. And I just wanted to share with you today a few excerpts from pieces kids wrote last year. I just went through the, my files. And just one-line excerpts from various pieces. So Kaylee wrote last year, Old tree, gray tree, dead and lifeless, heartbroken and frozen by the icy winter air. And Nolan wrote, the quaint Japanese box sat gleaming in the dawn sunlight with elegance of culture engraved into its now fragile frame. And McKenna wrote, the frogs turn into balloons as their necks fill up with air. They exhale and the croaking begins. Eliana wrote, I crouch here, regal, tall, and proud. Lauren B. wrote, the velvety carpet feels seamless and smooth against the guest's graceful dancing feet. And Ava wrote, this act revealed her beautiful golden locks of hair pinned in a tight updo. And Ava is actually here to tonight. She's going to talk to you about the Young Writers Studio, which is another wonderful program offered for middle school students through the, whole, the home and studio. So thank you. Um, good evening, my name is Ava Nelson. I'm in eighth grade at Jefferson Middle School and I am currently participating in my fourth year of the Young Writers Studio. This club has only ever given me good ex times and experiences and I personally do my best writing while I'm at the Alden B. Dow home and I know others do as well. 
Many kids my age believe that there isn't an ideal place or time to write, but this club gives them an amazing inspirational place to write and a good amount of time to develop a perfect story, poem, or any kind of writing they prefer. This house has so many unique rooms, giving the students many writing opportunities. Also, writing student, also after writing, students get a chance to share their stories. This is a chance to hear new ideas and writing styles. It also, it's also a chance to meet new people who also love writing. Lastly, the staff writes along with the students, modeling that the passion of writing doesn't die no matter the age. I feel so fortunate to have inclu been included in this program and benefit from so many amazing experiences, and I'm glad that others after me will as well. Thank you. Ava was speaking about the uh, Young Writer Studio, which was an outgrowth of the seventh grade writing program. The students enjoyed the experience so much, they kept saying to the folks at the Holman Studio, can't we come back? And the tribute to the Holman Studio staff is that they make it possible. Once a month, they send buses to Northeast and Jefferson after school to pick the students up, take them to the Holman Studio, provide materials for them, provide inspiration for them, provide uh, camar camaraderie and conversation, and then their parents pick them up from the home and studio. So I think that's an extraordinary outreach beyond our curricular goals and really supporting the creativity of young students. I was extremely privileged to be part of a conversation a couple of years ago with Craig in the home and studio when they said, well, Marilyn, we're doing things for middle school, we're doing things for elementary school, we're doing things for high school. What can we do for the teachers? And we partnered with the Saginaw Bay Writing Project, which is sponsored through the Saginaw Valley State University, and they're responsible responsible for providing professional development for teachers in the area concerning the, the teaching of writing. And we asked at the time, we said, well, could we possibly uh, send a couple of teachers to conferences? Maybe that would be helpful. Um, and what they said to us was, well, we want to do something to honor Veda, who was an educator. Um, she went through Kalamazoo College, and then she went to Columbia University and studied at Teachers College. She really believed in writing and teachers. Instead of sending a couple of teachers, let's bring the conference here. So in the summer of 2016, we were a rare sight because we hosted a one-week teacher's workshop for teachers supporting their instruction of writing. The National Writing Project believes that teachers who write are better teachers of writing. And so we had a workshop that was designed to include area teachers from any discipline. We had 28 teachers from 19 school districts, three from Midland Public Schools, who were able to spend a whole week at the home and studio, not residentially, but come in every day to the home and studio. There is too much. Um, but, but they were allowed access to two professional published writers in Michigan who guided their instruction in both um, narrative writing and memoir and fiction writing. And we had a national figure, Penny Kittle, who was a legend among literary scholars, to come to Midland. She spoke with our, our teachers in the morning. She gave a public presentation in the evening. Um, and then our teachers were given meals, access to the facility, and three nights of presentations by Michigan authors sponsored at the uh, Midland Center for the Arts. It was an incredibly generous gift to the educational community. Mary Beth Rodriguez from uh, Northeast was one of our Midland Public Schools participants in the teachers program, and she's here to talk about that experience. Good evening. Uh, I'm excited to be here tonight to talk about this teacher's workshop that I attended that really I wasn't sure what to expect but had an incredible impact on me and now it's having an impact on my students. Um, I walked away from the teacher's workshop after five days and it did feel sometimes like we lived there because we were there for sometimes even after hours. Um, and I wasn't just an English teacher, a seventh grade English teacher. I was actually a writing teacher who writes and who, is, who was a writer. And that has made an incredible impact on my teaching. Um, you know, being 20 plus years into my career, I needed that shot in the arm. I needed a little fresh of breath of fresh air. And this was it. Um, I feel like as a, a writing teacher who writes, you know, I'm in the process with my students. 
Um, I'm there with them. I know what it feels like to not be able to find the right phrase or the right word. And when you do, I, I get the elation too. So uh, it was just an amazing experience for me as a teacher. And I feel like the impacts are going to continue on uh, for a long time. This workshop was incredible. Uh, it was organized and structured in, way, in ways that I've never been to a workshop before. We had Penny Kittle, like uh, Marilyn spoke of. She was amazing, and her influence in my classroom is going to continue on for many years as well. We had the writers who were there for us at you know the drop of a hat, anything we needed, they were there for us. The thing about it was it was incredible, and it was wonderful, and it was an amazing experience. But had that taken place at a conference room at a hotel or even a conference room here, this is very nice, but <laughs> being at the home and studio made it a hundred times better. It really, as the week went on, the home and studio became a part of what we were doing. And to be there and to be immersed in that place for that amount of time was just, I can't even explain how amazing it was. And I, you know, for Craig and his staff to open their doors to us, I mean, we truly have a treasure here. Um, and I think we're all very lucky to be um, in this place as much as we are. And I don't think people know about it. So I, I appreciate you um, acknowledging this and um, recognizing Craig and the home and studio for what they do. Thank you. Okay, the good news is the workshop's gonna be offered again this summer. Uh, it's kind of a biannual thing. Uh, we are sending the invitation out to area schools all over the region, but it is also open to Midland Public Schools teachers of any grade level in any content area. We will, through the, the district office, we'll send out more information about that, but we encourage keep people to come and participate in this very unique opportunity. This year, our speaker will be Colleen Cruz, who is, again, a national literacy figure who's written a book called The Unstoppable Writing Teacher. If that doesn't inspire you, I don't know what will. Um, we are appreciative of the fact that we're going to be sharing some space between the home and studio and Central Park Elementary for our afternoon sessions uh, and we're going to host Colleen Cruz at the Central Auditorium so we appreciate that. We also provide sketches those units that teachers need so there are 25 sketches that teachers don't have to pay for that are part of that program. So we have two plugs one for the teachers conference and one for the uh, IBTOK open house this Wednesday. We want to thank you for the time. We hope you have learned something new about this valuable resource, this treasure that we have in Midland that partners with us for the benefit of our students, our teachers, and the community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Marilyn, Marilyn, don't go away so quickly. If we could, if you would, if you and your team would step forward and we could ask questions or uh, make comments. In front of the that would be yeah. great. <laughs> we are fixing that soon here, so. <laughs> I think it's on the agenda. Uh, do any of the board members have uh, questions or comments for the group? So, how many students participate in that Young Writers Studio? You know, it's amazing. We thought we would be successful um, when we initiated. If we got 10 or 15 students, mm -hmm. we have between 45 and 60 wow. plus students every month. That is incredible. Um, we capped it at 60, but then we've had parents call and say, my child really wants to come. And so we've said, if you will guarantee you get your child mm -hmm. there at home, then we've also accepted others. But we're just elated. And it's pandemonium, of course, when the bus arrives mm -hmm. and the boots are being put in one spot and the back pads and they have a snack and there's all kinds of great chatter. But then when they break up and they go into the house, it is silence. You could walk through any of the spaces and you're just amazed because these are kids whose passion it is to write and need time and space to do it. It's just amazing. Excellent. So Ava, is this something that you've done more than one year or is this your first year? Um, yeah, I started in the summer after fifth grade. Okay. Which, um, I mean, you're technically not supposed to start till sixth grade, but they let me in that year, which I was really excited about. And I've been doing it every summer and every school year. Since. Nice. Are students selected by a process or is it if they show an interest and they want to do it, then, then they're allowed to, to show up? First come, first serve. First come, first serve. So I had a waiting list. Allowing us to bring those three 
kids in. Okay. Of course, Great. So we have no doubt. Gives me goosebumps to think about all these opportunities and, and literally. Um, uh, just very exciting, and I'm so glad that they're going to do the teacher workshop again, too. What a wonderful opportunity. I think it's a resource that's just always been here, and Mr. Dow has just been a figure in our community, but the Home Studio is a National Historic Landmark building. It's something that's really rare, the Dow family so kind in the way they allow us to share it, that we sit on the furniture, that we become a part of it, that the space, we can learn that space does have an impact on us. <coughs> And we want to use that in any way we can and always willing to uh, have new ideas brought to us. The, the writer studio really was watching students during our seventh grade writing program. And, and I said to one of the students, you must love your writing club. And she's like, we don't have a writing club. We're like, you don't have a writing club. And that's when we started the writer studio. And again, the, the response has just been incredible. What time on Wednesday? 4.30. All right. The students are, it's all done by the students. They took an act, one of the activities that we did, one of the lessons. They will be telling you about it. There's actually a competition of who does the best job to tell you about their, their particular activity. So they designed how it was going to happen. They um, brought a list of things they wanted, the props they wanted, or tools that they wanted. And so we are there just to monitor and to watch. They're doing the whole program. Well, I've got to say thank you for a wonderful partnership. Marilyn, I think uh, your jacket would, would be very much approved by Alden and Veda Dow. <laughs> <laughs> and just the intentionality, Craig, of your program and, and how you've reached out to every level in the schools and the teachers, is uh, the intentionality of that is remarkable and very much appreciated. Thanks Thank for you. sharing Thank tonight. You. Appreciate you. you coming out. Thank you. Appreciate it. So I'm not sure who's interested in introducing next. Are you, Christy? I think they're ready. So we have another presentation, and it is going to be on our My Star curriculum. And Christy, are you taking the lead on that one? Okay, all yours. Hi, uh, good evening. My name is Christy Gayhart. I'm a teacher at Jefferson Middle School. I'm also a co-teacher leader in the Middle School Curriculum Program. There's a few things we're going to be doing tonight for you as board members. One is kind of explaining a little bit about where we're starting with some shifts in science, as well as later hearing a proposal about some of our scope and sequence changes for the middle school science program. So um, with me is Jenny Lennon. She's the other co-science uh, teacher leader. And Robin Allen is behind me, and Carmen Kessler to the right of me. So they, um, Jenny's going to talk a little bit more about the shifts, but and they're going to talk more about our curriculum, some of the things we've been doing and changing in our classrooms currently. Where we started is at 2015 November, the Michigan in, um, state of Michigan adopted the NGSS or the Next Generation Science Standards and over the last year and a half we've been lucky to partner with Michigan Tech University as part of a grant opportunity to what we call as my star and that's kind of where we're going and Jenny's going to talk a little bit more about the shifts and what's expected for these new standards. So it's really exciting. I can't wait to introduce these two to you, but I'll wait and give you some of the basics first that are kind of the boring part. But um, it's neat because science is changing, and um, the way kids are learning is so much more engaging and exciting than um, we've ever taught before. And so what we have here is um, a three-dimensional learning experience. That's what it's called, three-dimensional, because students, as they learn, they learn the science and engineering practices along with the disciplinary core ideas, which are life science, earth science, physical science, and a fourth dimension, which is called engineering and technology. And then those are then blended with some cross-cutting concepts. And the cross-cutting concepts are ideas that just span across all of the content areas. Things like patterns, um, cause and effect, scale, proportion, systems, and system models. So when kids are learning, they're just not learning content. They're learning how to be scientists. Um, some of the science and engineering practices that they learn are developing and using models 
constructing explanations, designing solutions, arguing from evidence, all of these things that real scientists do. Um, and again, you'll hear more of those specific concrete examples when, when you hear from the teachers. So we've also talked about that the, the other thing that we've changed is that the units are integrated. Um, you don't just do a life science unit on genetics. Instead, you are learning through a 21st century challenge. And so that encompasses all of the sciences. You may have a physical science um, objective in there. You might also learn something related to life science and then something related to earth and space. Who knows? So these units are very inter integrated, which is more like how science is. It's not de departmentalized. So we, we really um, enjoy that part of it as well. Um, so as we move forward, we've been implementing these MyStar units. We have a very committed group of um, science teachers at the middle school level. They're committed to making learning the best experience it can be for their students, to prepare them for the kind of future that they're going to be experiencing. Um, they're continually, all of our teachers are continually learning and improving their own skills. And um, the really neat thing, these two teachers are examples of this, is that they're influencing people not, not only just in Midland, but, but around the state and around the country. And so I'm really excited to work with such a great group of teachers. And Carmen and Robin are two examples of our teachers who are at the forefront of influencing and advancing science teaching across the country. Um, both of them have had major roles with MyStar. Um, they have both um, developed curriculum. They have piloted the curriculum. I mean, I'm talking spending hours on a Sunday afternoon coming in from 12 o'clock noon till 5, 6, 7 o'clock each week trying to pilot these units and provide feedback for MyStar. Um, they have presented at not only the state level, but the national level. And um, I'm just excited that they, oh, and they've written articles as well for MyStar. <laughs> So um, they've gracious, graciously accepted this opportunity to speak to you and share with you about their shifts in their teaching and learning um, and how kids are changing in their ways of learning science. So I'm going to turn it over to them now. Hello. Uh, thank you. The, uh, this MyStar curriculum that, that, we're, that we're going into and that we've been using is it's really changed my teaching for the better. It's, it's amazing. Um, the way that MyStar has set up the units, they're, as, as she said there, as Jen said, they're all integrated and they all have a problem solve to solve. Um, and the students are, they are so engaged in that problem because it's a, it's a real world um, problem that, uh, that, that they're familiar with. And then they work together to solve that problem. Now, the, the big change for me is you know in the past that we would teach a, a unit on energy and then you would choose a, a standard i mean you would you would teach that standard then you'd move on to the next one and then and then you'd move on to the next one so you're covering everything well the, it's it's different now and all of the units are connected to solve the problem and the students understand why they're learning that why we are we are building what we're building toward and you can see the the interest level um, is is there. It's 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 so much greater. And um, <coughs> you know, one of the one of the units, the kids all got to they were, they were set up in groups, and each group was an ecosystem. And the students got to choose a they were able to choose a, an organism um, from that ecosystem. And over six weeks, it was just amazing because every lesson had to do with um, their organism. And if you guys know sixth graders, they, they love to role play and they, they really can get into, um, into that role. So, you know, we had some squirrels that wouldn't sit next to foxes and um, they, were, they were very, very into it. And it just made learning so much fun and it just makes it a lot more authentic to them. Um, so it's just been, it's really changed my, my thinking and it's really changed my teaching um, for the better. And it is, it's, it's so authentic and I'm, I'm glad I was able, I mean, been able to, uh, to pilot it and do some field testing and then, and now running some, uh, some units in the classroom. Um, Carmen has some more to say. Carmen. Thanks. <clears throat> Thanks, Robin. Uh, this has been, 
a very delightful experience for me and for the students that I teach. Uh, as a special education teacher, many times, and I don't think it's purposeful, but sometimes it's overlooked. My star takes a big, took a big chance on my classroom of students. And I'm watching some of them go by um, behind me. And some of these are co-taught students. And some of these are sixth grade students that are on the screen behind me. And watching them grow as learners beyond what I absolutely expected. We took the first couple weeks in our piloting process and I thought, oh, I don't know if we can do this. This is really hard. Uh, the students are struggling. I'm struggling. So I went back to my star, and they listened. And we said, well, how can we do all this discussion? And I talked to Robin. I talked to Jen. And we worked it out through PLCs that we work with other teachers around the state. I was able to work with teachers from Kalamazoo, teachers from uh, Bangor. And we all talked to each other, and we worked out these problems together. Then the students started creating these lessons on natural hazards. They studied maps. They studied data. They had to do math. They had to develop, uh, mitigate problems for uh, earthquakes. We worked really hard together until we got to um, developing these lessons to get to the unit challenge. And this unit challenge is like a capstone. And the students put together a public service address where they took all of the information from all the lessons, put it together in a final project. They didn't just do a memorization task to pass a test and then to move on. They actually made a difference and understood about their hazard and how they could help with technology. How can they help with tech, um, uh, mitigation of the problem? They wrote fictitious letters to the mayor. We had a lot of fun with this unit. This has changed my teaching and my expectations of my students. It, it is an incredible experience. So. Do you have more to add, Robin? OK. <laughs> do you have any questions for us? I'm sure we do. Thank you. <laughs> We'll open it up to anyone. Was it an island that they were on? Because they have these. <coughs> OK, there, this, the thing that you're looking at up here, that, that was our, uh, yeah, you could go ahead. Uh, we worked with Jefferson. And so not only did the eighth grade teachers work together at Northeast, we also incorporated Jefferson on a piloting process that was an informal piloting process. And yes, they were on. You want to talk Mid about it? Mid Luwani. So we had a climate change unit, and we had a fictitious island, our Midluwani, and all the <laughs> students had different jobs on the island and had different concerns for their industries because of some of the things that were happening on their island. The nice part for me is I was teaching, we had a LD section of science that year. And we also <laughs> had a co-taught section of science that year. So I go, and I was able to see it from the learning the students who had learning differences all the way up to the students of the general population and how they were able to do with that climate change. Uh, just to see the transformation of all of the students and it was able to, to have a success for students at any level um, was part of the wonders of the MyStar. It was incredible. Excellent. It was very encouraging to, um, to hear you guys speak about it. Um, I know that for a long time, when I was when I was a t science teacher, um, that the middle school was always challenged. They weren't sure what direction they were going, and to have this program in place and to be developing it as you go and having your input heard um, is really wonderful. And I think that from the STEM and the elementary that I see going on, and that carrying through the middle school to the high school, it, it, the kid we're going to have kids that are just uh, going <coughs> to blow everybody else out of the water. It's it's really uh, extraordinary. So, congratulations. Keep up the effort. I was just going to comment. I think the most exciting thing I heard you say. I mean, the program is amazing. I would have loved something like that in my science classes. But um, just how you said the kids are excited, and they really are grasping science in a different way, and. Um, making it applicable, but just enjoying it and having fun with it while they're learning. 
one of the biggest takeaways is when the students are walking out of the classrooms and they're still discussing what we're doing. <laughs> wow. um, they're not just leaving and, and going on to lunch. You can hear them talking about their experiences. Uh, you can hear them saying, well, I'm not really, because there's a lot of reading and writing involved in this and a lot of discussion. And they take sides and they're debating things on <laughs> the way out the door. It, so you know the learning is transferring from beyond the, the small room into discussions outside of the classroom. Um, speak, speaking of that, I had a, a parent actually email me about um, about a conversation he had with his son. He they had seen a scarlet. <laughs> we saw he they had seen a scarlet tanager outside their uh, their their window, and the dad was uh, was going to explain how important the scarlet tanager is to the ecosystem. And his son, who had just learned, we had just talked about ecosystem, and his son happened to be in the group with the scarlet tanager. <laughs> went into a 30-minute uh, <laughs> dissertation about how, what, why, how it's important to Michigan's ecosystems, um, some of its, uh, you know, where it gets its energy. Um, it, 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 blew, it was so exciting to see that, and, that, and the, uh, his dad was very excited about that and how he saw the excitement in his, in his son um, and was able to have that conversation. I thought that was really neat because, like Carmen said, they take it home with them, and we hear them actually talking about science in the hallway, which – is, is, is really neat. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I want to thank you for having the courage to take on the challenge. And uh, if it wasn't for educators like you and, and putting in those extra hours and, and really making this program what it is, and, and when, when you're down and out and think it's not working and, and ready to give in, um, to ask questions and dig in deeper. And I loved that you reached out to PLCs in other communities too. And uh, I just really appreciate the energy that you, you put into the program and to the kids. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, since we're on thank yous, Pam, I'll take the next one too. Um, it is January, and January is School Board Recognition Month. And so we are thanking you for all of you do. Um, I look at uh, school boards in a different way than I think most people do because um, I, I happen to work for the seven of you, <laughs> um, so it's a different approach. But you know, it's a service, and, and, and anyone who thinks uh, differently is wrong. And it's really a service to a community. And even though you are elected, it's really more a volunteer service than it is an election service to do what you do all the time. And so. We thank you, and in front of you, you have um, several items, but in continuing with our, our recent tradition, um, there are some books that were in your name, and your name will go in there, and they'll go into our libraries and their school buildings, so some very nice books in there. And then as we talked about earlier, and I think most of you now know that Susan Schaefer's class of fourth graders at Seabird um, participated in making you several thank you cards, and the art angels at Seabird as well stepped up and made you some really nice art. So just how talented our students are. Yeah. So our students are thanking you as well. And I think later on you're going to get some from, um, from the teachers as well. But yeah, we thank you very much for everything you do. Thank, thank you. you. Right. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Wonderful for the gift. same reason you do your job. Because we're passionate about education. Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks. All right, so that was all the fun part of the board meeting. Now we get into the work, right? Yes. So we move into item five, which is for action. We have NEOLA Fall 2017 <coughs> Policy Revisions. Yeah, so NEOLA is our policy um, service. Uh, and so sometimes we mix that with um, board policy, but it's really your policy after we have the service provided to us. Um, and NEOLA has provided our fall update, which um, I review with a consultant from NEOLA before um, we bring it then to administrative services, and we have <coughs> reviewed those as well, and now to the board for full recommendation of the policies. Um, the majority of the policies you see in front of you were, as so many are today, to come in compliance with law, or th are those policies um, that are legislated at us um, coming forward. So we're Great. For approval of those policies. Thank you. So at this time, I'll entertain a motion. I move we approve agenda item 3.5, which is the Neola Fall 2017 policy revisions. Is it? OK, it is 3.5. OK. Support. And moved by Angela, supported by Patrick. And we'll open for discussion. 
What a bunch of lovely reading. <laughs> <laughs> like, have I read this already? <laughs> 80 yeah. pages, yeah. Oh 17 policies. Yep. Right. Uh, just I, a slight <laughs> sliver of all the ones we have, though. <laughs> yes, yes, that's for sure. Uh, some of the policies were about uh, safety and visitors in our, in our schools, and others about purchasing policies and um, technology and email. Um, Internet use. Right. So a lot of great policies. And uh, reading through all these, it really made me thankful that we have Neola to uh, let us know what's going on uh, and, and how we need to uh, align with our uh, legal obligations. So. <coughs> all right. If there's, are there any other comments? Is there any? Um, I know you don't have time to look through it, and it's something you're going to have to perfect in the future, but we had talked a little bit about a purchasing flowchart. Is that something yes. that we can talk about further yeah. at, at some other time? Because I know there's not enough time to. Yeah, Bob, Bob would be glad to take that further because I, Brad, after we got done, I took that, and um, uh, well, Bob took that to Lori Holderby, as we mentioned, and so I think we're, he's, she's working at it and probably coming to you soon. Yeah, we had a. Uh, We've always had a purchasing flowchart that goes out to all our basically financial people in each building as to how they should follow. Um, looked over uh, some of the material uh, that you provided, and there was a, a, another flowchart in there that we think, and we're just changing it over to fit here, uh, Michigan, and Midland in particular, uh, to use to send out. We think it's, a, um, I guess it's a more detailed just had a, a little better flow than the one we've been using for a while. Um, so they go into action almost immediately. So the flow chart is something we do send out on an annual basis, but it's something we provide to anybody that's out there purchasing. Just gives them a nice flow to if it's, you know, this amount of money, you should do this. If it's this, you should do that. Um, and like I said, we looked at it, and it was certainly a, a nice upgrade to what we were um, uh, currently using. So. Um, She's at a conference tonight, and she's back. She was already working on it with the right amounts in there, and I just hadn't a chance to look it over. But As we'd mark you change over to that and put it into our packet. Because Bob and I thought we, you know, we, we had one in the system, but um, we gave Lori the, that material, and she's coming up. Awesome. Thanks for the quick response on that and the work. We look forward to seeing the flow. So are there any other comments? All right, then we'll move into um, a vote. <coughs> All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. All right, it's unanimous. <coughs> OK, we have item um, 3.6 3. 3. for action, uh, graduation supplies and classroom provider procedure, procedure changes. Mike? Yes. So we recall a few months back, um, Mr. Kurt Yaki presented some um, viewpoints on our uh, procedures on how we had been um, allowing vendors to offer class rings to our students and um, question our purchasing procedures of graduation materials and supplies. And so we have worked through our FFO committee, through legal counsel, um, and um, really no issues of legal issues or any, anything how we were proceeding but um, to meet and, and more compliance um, and, to, and certainly answer Mr. Yaki's questions. Um, it seems cleanest to make a recommendation that we really get out of kind of the classroom bus business. It's not, there's not many purchased anymore and that way we're not um, preferring one vendor over the other, the soap vendor issue. And then the second part of that was purchasing. And so um, even though it's well below our bid thresholds, um, it, we certainly can have our high school principals uh, gain quotes, which is what we do with smaller amounts a lot of times anyway, and so we'll have them gain quotes on graduation materials before we purchase. And so you have that before you um, for action tonight. Okay, thanks for that information. At this time, we'll accept a motion. Move to approve item 3.6. Graduation supply and classroom provider procedure changes. Support. Moved by Patrick, supported by Angela. And is there any discussion? 
Um, I, I mean, I guess I wanted to say about the class ring, I was surprised when it came up, just given that I have children, well, one who has recently graduated and one still in high school, because I don't know anyone that even had a class ring. And so I did a little investigation myself to, well, A, you pulled the data, and it's, I mean, very, very minimal <coughs> purchases. And then I also did my own just amongst, you know, mm -hmm. through my children and through, you know, the other people that I know. And I don't know anyone who's bought a class ring. So I don't see any problem getting out of it. Um, I mean, my daughter was kind of like, seriously, mom? Like, who buys a class ring? And um, so I, you know, took that as feedback. I think, you know, I, if I thought that this was something a lot of people were still purchasing, I would have a different opinion probably. But I really believe that there really isn't a market in our schools for this. I went out, I did a little research. I mean, if you really want to get one, there are numerous places out there. You can get them at Walmart. You can get them at the mall. You can, you know, a lot of different places that you can get them um, with everything moving online nowadays, you know, too. With purchasing, so that's why I feel comfortable with this recommendation. Do you have any other comments? I know it was an issue uh, that they logistically they didn't want to have multiple vendors. They thought it would be a challenge, and from a free enterprise standpoint, I would think that we would want to encourage that competition to have the vendors sitting side by side to com competing for this business, but. I am also going to agree with uh, Angela and the, the group of the, the decision that they made. They studied this legally all through all this. I just, from a free enterprise standpoint, I think that competing for legal, business is good. It was but, a legal issue. Um, but if there's not the demand, or there's not a large demand. Yeah, that was my, you know. Then you have a supply and demand, and it's, if you had four people that are there competing for the business of 10 rings, I understand, but mm -hmm. from a, I'm just a huge proponent of free enterprise yep. and that side of it, but I'm also going to uh, agree with what the committee has decided through their study. The legal counsel has some concerns about um, a vendor, a vendor style fair. What it opens you up to? So, uh, to put it in a different terminology, they fear of if you open your vendors just about anyone, we, you you can't restrict either, and if you restrict. Um, because you have a vendor that you prefer not to have in there. So like advertisement, why, why do schools stay away from advertisement? Because you, um, you could get an advertiser of, of a, from an area, let's say we're letting restaurants advertise. <laughs> do you, what bars do you allow to advertise in your schools? And so when you restrict them, then you open yourself up to more litigation on that side of it. So a vendor fair was not something that, that Truen would recommend anywhere for us on that. And so if you were doing open co enterprise competition, he would suggest bidding um, uh, in, in that process um, going forward where you choose a, a better versus allowing multiple vendors and how do you restrict one versus the other. Mm -hmm. So we did explore that one as well. Okay. Any other comments? All right, we'll move into a vote. All in favor of item 3.6, say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. And it's unanimous. Item 3.7 for action. We have boardroom AV upgrade. Mr. Cooper. Yeah, we have in front of you tonight a uh, recommendation for a boardroom AV upgrade. It really stems from uh, the Midland Public Schools in the city of Midland. They gave us a grant for our television station. Uh, we did some phase one work of it. Uh, and that's complete. This is more the phase two part. Um, it's not just for board meetings. They do film other things in here. And as you guys know from being here, that there have been sound issues at times, if you've gone back and watched it, uh, cutting in and out. Um, and of course, as you upgrade things down in the uh, production room, as I would call it, you have the same kind of needs here. So uh, if you looked at the list, and I, I gave you the bid tab and also the individual uh, bid that was selected, which was a little better, um, you'll see software upgrades and things that are necessary to better interact with the upgrades we did down there. Um, there is um, this one, uh, we're recommending advanced lighting uh, and sound of Troy, Michigan, 38913 um, The main part of that will be funded by that uh, City of Middle Grant, which we have uh, 33000 left of. So the remaining uh, five, roughly 6000 will will um, come out of general funds. And 
the administration recommends approval tonight. Very good. I'll accept a motion for item 3.7. I move approval of item 3.7, boardroom AV upgrade. Support. Moved by Angela, supported by Mary. And is there any discussion? Well, as you saw tonight, when they had to stand behind the screen, it would be nice to have that uh, little presentation issue be, in, be fixed as well as a small part of this project. Well, and I think we saw the other day, we will no longer have. Yes. <laughs> so we have goosenecks that come down. Yeah, except for maybe me, who has to get up and speak and move okay. around. So. Right, right. A big thank you to the City of Midland for su supporting uh, MPS TV and allowing us to move forward. I think it's a, a wonderful for our community to be able to stay engaged in our school's activities. I think Cindy has an example there. There, you go. there it is. Oh. The idea of the long gooseneck is that you could keep it below the uh, this piece so it's not blocking the view. Looks great. Are there any other comments? All right, we'll move into a vote. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? And it's unanimous. <laughs> Item 3.8 for action, we have bond construction bids. And we'll probably do these separate. Yes, we'll do them separate. All right, 3.81, we have asbestos abatement at Siebert and Chestnut Hill Elementary Schools. Uh, bids were accepted for the abatement work by Nova Environmental as part of the construction and renovation. Uh, did you want to talk about sure. them? Yep. So last um, uh, month you submit, uh, approved uh, the contractor bids out, and this month you have um, the asbestos portion of that. Um, we had a number of contractors come through. So we used an asbestos consultant, Nova, which is one of the um, more reputable, larger consultants that handle this for you. They not only handle the bid, bid portion of it, but they handle the science behind it and then the um, compliance issue. So they're in the building while the contractor's there and they're make, measuring the air and they keep records. And um, if you ever have any legal issue, it comes in quite handy, which I have had. And um, Nova was our savior in, in that piece of it because of their great records of it. Um, and so the reason I tell you all this is because Nova's recommendation has a sole bidder here. Um, and so after the, the b several contracts went through um, and we received bids, we only received one. So the con good point to point out here is the other the, the contracts did not know each other, were not bidding. Um, eventually the others chose not to bid, didn't fit their work scope and their schedule. Um, and so uh, it wasn't like the, the other contract knew there was competition potentially. <coughs> And then we were also able, Nova says they were able to go in and check to make sure we get a good price because we've had this work done in the previous two um, uh, editions uh, um, and the work done at uh, Woodcrest and Plymouth. And so they compared those unit prices and are, are, they're comfortable in recommending this recommendation to you to accept the bid of quality environmental services out of Gladwin. And um, quality was the one who also won the bid uh, prior to. So, and even though the dollar amount is 254000 quarter million dollars, um, it's actually in, in some ways for asbestos contractor a small project, so that may have been part of why some of them chose not to change their summer work schedule for that piece of it. So it is here for recommendation for you, and with the explanation um, from NOVA of why um, one actual bid. Uh, I guess background as well, we did some checking. Um, have we accepted a single bid before we have? And, and ironically, one of in the recent past, one of the three times you have, it was an asbestos, or two of the three times. There's two other times. Two the, the, the asbestos appears to be one of those because of the scope and sequencing, especially. Mm -hmm. um, you, you, have, you don't have thousands of companies out there that do that. You have a limited number of companies, and then, of course, you, you're limiting when you have to bait that. And it appears through time, I think we... Uh, real quickly found back in the sinking fund 2005 2009 same kind of thing different uh, company back then it wasn't Nova that we we're using back then uh, so different companies but it appears that happens from time to time great well thanks for all the background I'll entertain a motion for item 3.8.1 I move we approve <coughs> item 3.8.1 asbestos abatement at Seabird and Chestnut Hill Elementary Schools Support. Motion made by Angela, supported by Patrick. <coughs> Open it up for discussion. 
I have something I, I know what, during this meeting I had a question. I'm not seeing one bidder that's always concerning for a project as big as this, and it is something as a, as a committee we did ask. Um, I really wanted to know why. Why was there one bidder? And when Daryl did his research and said that it was based on the, the timing of the project, I know that based on how Woodcrest and Plymouth went with how fast those timetables are from when school gets out to the end of the year, I, I know it's a cramped session. So again, I, we did do our diligence on that. I, I don't like having the one better, but in this instance, I understand it is a tight timetable. Um, so I wanted to find it clear that we did, we did discuss that issue. Thank you, Patrick. Are there any other comments? What was the budget for this? It, it's in the budget, but I don't know. In budget. I don't know if I know the I know I total amount off the top of my head. But it is in budget. You can answer that. Okay. Um, so with, with NOVA doing this, are they responsible for reaching out to the pool? Correct. Yeah, they, if they solely do it. Correct. And it, it's throughout all of Michigan that they're looking for this? Yes, they put, um, some of these contractors were from southeast Michigan and those portions of it, um, the ones that showed. So it's advertised like we do all of them through uh, state websites. Yeah, it's my understanding. It, we do have all the advertising through state websites, so you have to do that. So it's done also my understanding that they're, they're actually that's where more of them would come from because yeah. uh, there's not as many uh, as you go. In, North in the state. And two, I don't want to go too t detailed in this, two of the local, most local ones um, that do asbestos payment, the larger of them, one out of Bay City, without naming the name, is one that I've been in litigation with prior and had won the litigation with NOVA. And so NOVA being here and I being here as the superintendent probably eliminates them as one who wants to do work. They have shown up, they have go, did the walkthrough, Brad, but they, and they had, did bid one one job, but I, I think there's probably some known between all of that as well that eliminates one of the larger ones out of Bay City, which you may know that name. I'm not going to mention it tonight. Well, and I think we did have four contractors that walked through it. It Correct. wasn't that we only had one that. In the, and when you talk about timeline, it's two to three days. So they have to have the best out to get the contractors in, and so you're talking, you know, you're giving them specific days. Right. You know, right. I don't know what they are, June 14, 15. And so some of them it just doesn't make a work already scheduled on that date. So I think that's part of the issue. Okay. Do we have any more questions? All right, seeing none, we're gonna move into a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay, we have uh, <laughs> five ayes and one nay. Motion passed. Um, item 4.0, request to address the board. Oh, sorry. Thank you. It's a good thing that you're here to keep me in line. Uh -huh. So, item 3.8.2, furniture purchases for Plymouth Elementary Maker Space. Um, did you want to talk about that one? I'll start it, but Bob may want to jump in since he handles the, more, the for most of it. But following the same furniture purchases that we've done all, all the way through, it is now time to get the uh, run time up for the maker space that uh, we walked out and saw tonight in construction at, at Plymouth. And so um, it's an April, May window and um, Great Lakes Furniture of Holland again. I think they've had a couple of them um, at the cost of 30,927.60. Do you want to add, Bob? Yeah, it's, it's kind of a familiar pattern. I know we started with, uh, if you will, the cafeteria tables, which hopefully ship today. Um, so they should be here, but we're doing fine. Uh, went to the media centers, which we approved at the last one, and now we're to maker spaces. Uh, Woodcrest isn't with this one just because that was an addition, and so furniture was, so that was finalized. You really can't look at the furniture there. Um, and it's all part of what we've been doing as we go forward. Uh, the little difference in this maker space than the ones that you would see at Central Park is we could make those grade specific, and you can't do that here. So we worked uh, pretty closely with the principals. Um, and talked about, well, what can we do here? And it comes with like tables that have a little height of adjustment to them or a couple different size, so they can be standing in seating, uh, more caster-based chairs, which tend to have uh, adjustments on them, as you know, so you do get a little height differential in them. Um, and then, uh, like everything that we have in the 
Baker spaces if you've been at Central Park, all very movable. Um, and because you know we have an idea where we want to start everything in there, but as you know, if you've gone through any one of those at Central Park since, it looks differently. Still purchased through the uh, national contracts. Um, still uh, the same brand. Uh, we're looking for the quality that we're getting. We've had really good feedback on the maker spaces in particular, the types of tables and the composites on the top and how easy they are to move around. So we've heard all good things with those uh, strongly warranted. But again, it's the, it's the have natural, uh, we talked about this before, but natural furniture price, and that's a common practice. <coughs> so it's like a state bid, but at a national level. Great, thank you for that information. I'll entertain a motion for item 3.8.2. I move to approve. 3.8.2 furniture purchase for Plymouth Elementary Makerspace. Support. Mary moved and Lynn support. And we'll open it up for discussion. I, having been in that space today and, and seeing, um, my question was having the various grade levels and different size students in there and they've taken all that into consideration in, in the ordering of this furniture. So going to be great. Talking to Margaret Doan, uh, she was very excited about the furniture and uh, very uh, comfortable and um, with the quality and what she had seen at Central Park Elementary as well. So uh, it'll be wonderful to have that furniture in that space. Okay, we will move into a vote. I just I'll, have one quick thing. Oh, I, sure. I'm sure that Absolutely. going through the Daryl's thing that all the Previous purchase and this purchase are under budget, correct? Yeah, the, what we're doing with furniture, and I think I mentioned this one other time, but um, it's actually a total amount we're, we're using as a budget number, which was 125000 and that's for the cafeteria tables, the media center, and the makerspace. Um, at Plymouth, we're actually going to be, uh, it's either two or 3000 under that. Um, we do know that this is going to fluctuate slightly, so... When I say that, if you look at the total furniture budget, we're totally okay. If you're talking about kind of a, uh, the 125 is kind of like a thumbnail, what we're trying to do at each building, but we're going to hit a building where one part's going to be higher or not. So we are, as we complete Plymouth, we're good, uh, under. And I'm going to guess we're going to need some of that uh, when you do Woodcrest because it's just a slightly different design. And their media center was slightly higher, if you remember, we talked about that at the time. So. So this one is, uh, you know, make space could come out exactly the same, or it might be slightly different. But that's what we're shooting for. All of these are within the furniture overall budget. We just tried to set an amount so as we're going out to each of these schools, we we're kind of trying to work under a certain number. So that's what that's where we stand today. Thanks. Okay. Good questions. All right. So we will move into a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? And it's unanimous. Now we get to go to request for the board to the board. Re request to address the board. Is it? Yep. Still on. Good. Um, as you know, I'm Mark Hackforth, president of the Midland City Education Association, and I'm here this evening representing the educators for Midland Public Schools. Um, we're very fortunate in Midland to live in a community that supports our schools, supports our teachers, supports our students, and fortunate to have community members who are willing to volunteer lots of time and energy and expertise and passion for public schools. So our organization decided to, in appreciation of all the efforts that you do, donate, make a donation to the robotics programs at both high schools. Um, why robotics? As we heard earlier in this board meeting, there's many things that represent the best of Midland Public Schools. Robotics is one of those programs. Uh, they, it, it highlights all the skills and abilities of a, of a wide variety of students. It highlights the talents of our teachers and coaches and advisors. It highlights our, our emphasis on STEM, science, technology, engineering, math, project-based learning, which are all in vogue now. But not only that, it's also the creativity that the teachers encourage in the classrooms every day, the working together, the teamwork, the problem solving. So we felt that was a, a, a great place to show our appreciation. So again, thank you for all the time that you put in 
you know, the community thanks you and we thank you for your support of our schools. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other requests to address the board? Seeing none, we will move into our administrative services. Uh, looks like we had a study committee meeting. <coughs> L Lynn, were you going <laughs> to? That's me. <laughs> I had two here, and I thought. <laughs> We've had Lynn here since 5 o'clock, so she's getting <laughs> long in the day. <laughs> we met on January 4th. Members present were myself, Brad Blasey, Scott McFarland, and Mike Sherrill. As Cindy Young. We uh, discussed updating the NEOWL policy, which we talked about this evening, and we brought action to the board to ch for the policy changes to a number of Midland Public Schools policies as recommended by NEOLA in our fall 2017 updates. NEOLA retains law firms to provide legal reviews of published materials and cons Salts on policy updates in the spring and fall each year. Therefore, the legal accuracy and compliance of proposed revisions can be unequivocally guaranteed. Mr. Sherrill and Administrative Services Committee members discussed um, a number of board policies that are listed below that have proposed changes. The policies were presented tonight and uh, will be included in documentation for board members to review before the meeting. So it's all taken care of. Thank you, Lynn. Moving into uh, item six, curriculum instruction and assessment. And it looks like we have some action. So item 6.1 for action is major change proposals. Uh, Brian, did you want to take this one? Yeah, at uh, the December board meeting, we introduced to you seven major change proposals for the um, obligatory review period and we are bringing those same seven major change proposals to you tonight and before we push this to action a, a couple of notes uh, number one I, I really think this is a, a landmark vote tonight for stem education within Midland public schools there are several on here that are going to lead to some very innovative advancements and experiences for our students um, I, I don't want to leave out any of major importance but you saw tonight the MyStar curriculum um, and the piloting and the work that's gone behind that. And I think that the work of our teachers is not going to impact just our students, but it's going to impact students throughout the region and also throughout the nation as well, too. Um, in high school, uh, the adoption of the Carbon Time Framework for our biology, for our partnership with Michigan State, is also going to have a tremendous impact. And of course, our project Lead the Way Secondary Course Pathway is something that we know is going to really transform our elective offerings at the middle school and the high school as well. So we are extremely excited about what these courses will be able to provide for our students and the impact that they'll be able to have um, for a long time on the quality of STEM education that we can provide for our students. And the final note before this is, uh, of course, that these are always contingent upon the 1819 adopted budget. So approval mm -hmm. tonight means that uh, we are with them philosophically, and we need to make sure that available funds are there in the 1819 budget as well. Great. Thank you for that information. So I'll accept a <coughs> motion for item 6.1. I move that we accept a item 6.1 major change proposals. Support. Moved by Lynn, supported by Angela, and we'll open it up for discussion. You know, we sat in the meeting, a couple meetings, and had a lot of discussion, and, and it was very interesting, and um, I think these changes are going to do great things for our students and um, should be exciting for the teachers as well. <coughs> yeah, I'm I mean, a lot of these pertain to middle high school, which is where I've just been. And so, you know, I'm excited to see some of these. I know already my children, especially my son going out in the real world in college, I mean, I must say he's already had a fabulous education from here going out, and he's been very well prepared. But these will just give them even more. <coughs> That's very, very exciting. I, I agree. Um, with Project Lead the Way and My Star, what we heard tonight, but really what we've been hearing all along this year and with the STEM strategic plan and, and how it's all aligning, um, 
It's great for our district, and, and for sure we're moving in, in a wonderful direction, and, and uh, I'm, I'm glad uh, we're moving in this direction, and it's, it's so important to have the, the teachers behind us and, and willing to have the courage to really um, take, take the extra time and learn totally, in some cases, new ways of, of teaching and doing it for the students and to hear the excitement in the teachers' voices about how it impacts the student learning and how the learning uh, happens in the hall and even a parent calling in and how they're seeing the changes. So I I'm, feel we're very fortunate in the district uh, to be moving in this direction and I'm totally supportive. I think it's really cool too that um, a couple of the proposals were from teachers themselves that they had a great idea and were willing to step out and and um, had plans in 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 the making. It wasn't just like I got a good idea, but have actually worked on how this is all going to logistically work out. And um, that that's passion for teaching and that's passion for uh, showing what kids want to see and and giving all the kids the opportunity. Uh, to learn in the way that best suits them. Right. Are there any other comments? I know for the carbon time, you said that's a partnership with Michigan State? Yes, sir. And my star obviously is with Michigan Tech. Yes, sir. And uh, Michigan State has a great presence in the Great Lakes Bay region. Maybe we want to welcome Michigan Tech into the Midland area and maybe they can have a building and maybe we could be the hub for my there star for the state of Michigan. There you go. <coughs> I like the way you Michigan think. Tech. Uh -huh. There you go. We kind of are, but um, I think, correct me if I this wrong, right? If I recall that many years ago, it was um, one of our foundations that got that partnership going with Michigan Tech as well. So yeah, it was, it was a Midland Grace Grace Out Foundation with a very generous $5 million grant to do it. And we actually presented with them during that presentation in support of it. And then, of course, as you saw tonight, our, our teaching staff, so Penny and Jen Lennon, have really taken off and become um, the leaders in the region. And I know that Mike announced this uh, about a month ago, but Penny also authored uh, a grant that is netting us nearly six figures in support of the MyStar um, research as well, too. And so we really have become leaders um, in the curriculum development of this proposal and great partners with Michigan Tech. So hope to see them down here a lot more. And yeah. they've, they've done great things. With, with our staff. You know, they, there's districts coming from all over to view Robin and them teaching this mm -hmm. My Star mm -hmm. curriculum. So I sat in the classroom one day and um, Robin had explained to me why there was two or three extra adults in there <laughs> and they happened to be from other districts viewing, so. Mm -hmm. Great. All good stuff. Right. Okay, I will uh, accept a motion for item 6.1. Oh, wait, we did, did that. Good. I yep. will vote. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, so all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. So we have uh, item 7.0, finance facilities and operations. Um, <coughs> study committee meeting minutes. Yep, that's me. So we met January 8th. Um, in addition to the FFO members present, Daryl Jumbrow from Barton Marlow and J Dale Jerome from Friends Associates were also present. Uh, we discussed a couple items. Uh, the first was the bond update. Mr. Dumbrow provided for the committee an example of the process that a bid from our latest projects follows from start to finish. Uh, number two, the committee reviewed and discussed the bid for the abatement project scheduled for Chestnut Hill and Seabird. Uh, we also discussed finance and operations of the district with Mr. Cooper and Mr. Sherrill. Uh, reviewed the, the following in particular. Uh, one, November financial, financials. Two, the purchase of furniture for Plymouth Makerspace. Three, the purchase of, t purchase of TV, sound, and projection equipment for the boardroom update. And four, the possible change in FFO meeting dates to two weeks prior to the Board of Education meeting uh, in hopes that that gives us more time if there's any questions or work to do um, for information for the board that allows us more time to get everybody prepared and able to make good decisions. Great. Thank and you, our next meeting is Monday, February 12th at 5 p.m. Excellent. Thank you. And moving to item 7.2 for information, Mr. Cooper. Okay, we have five items tonight, totaling $1,683.33. Um, kind of run the gamut, we see a couple for the robotics for uh, the elementary level there. You'll see a couple of donations. Uh, Battle of the books, classroom books, and uh, food service scholarships, which 
Uh, we're trying to get a few more of those, many times anonymously, but um, people that want to give for students that maybe can't uh, pay um, for their meals. It seems to be a big topic nationally, and a lot of people are interested in helping our students out. So th those are the informational ones. We do have two and 7.3 that require your action tonight. They total $400,000. Uh, these are part of uh, the foundation grants for our STEM strategic plan. There is $150,000 from the Stroh-Sacker Foundation and $250,000 from the Gerstacker Foundation. Um, as you recall, uh, the three foundations, four with the Dow Chemical Foundation, uh, have donated uh, various sums of money to, to come to our strategic STEM plan, and they've given it over time, and, and these two just came at this point in time. So because of the size of them, it requires your approval. Great. Thank you. I'll uh, accept a motion. So moved. Second. OK, Support. that was a motion by Mary for action gifts totaling $400,000, supported by Brad. And we'll open it up for any comments. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> what are you, what are you Holy <laughs> catfish. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Yes. Right. We're so excited about the STEM strategic plan. And without this kind of uh, support, we would never be able to, to uh, move like we're moving. So um, a big thank you to the Charles J. Strostacker Foundation and the Roland M. Gerstacker Foundation for their support. And we'll move into a vote. All in favor of accepting this wonderful gift, say aye. 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 Opposed? And again, unanimous. We move into item eight for human resources. 8.1 is study committee meeting, meeting minutes. I have that panel. Okay, Thanks, Lynn. We met on uh, Friday, January 5th at 1 p.m. Uh, Scott McFarland, myself, and Patrick Pazee, Mr. Sharo and Cynthia Marchese were there, as well as there were some Masespa representatives. Um, our business was a grievance. Um, Masespa grievance hearing was conducted during this meeting. Okay, thank you for those minutes. We move to item 8.2 for information. Um, the board and staff extend their deepest sympathy to these families. Mrs. Shirley James, who passed away on December 14, 2017. Ms. James was a bus driver in the Transportation Department for 21 years, retiring in 2006. Ms. Eloise Lund, who passed away on December 19, 2017. Mrs. Lund was a teacher with Midland Public Schools for 24 years, retiring in 1975. Mrs. Lund received several awards with, uh, while at MPS, one being the Gerstacker Teacher Proficiency Award in 1963. The following staff members announced uh, his retirement effective as of this date. Gary Siebert, computer technician, the skilled trades, will retire on August 31st, 2018. Great, thank you. Item nine is correspondence to and from the Board of Education. And item 10 is scheduled activities for information. You will find uh, the all regular scheduled Board of Education meetings um, will be in the minutes. Meetings are also posted on the MPS website, uh, midlandps.org, under the Board of Education tab. And you can also find agendas, minutes, and videos there. And we'll move into item 11, study discussion. So how about I start over here with Patrick? All right. Um, always impressive to see our monthly presentations. Uh, tonight's both of them uh, certainly didn't disappoint. Uh, the, particularly encouraged by the, the science changes and revisions that Northeast were seeing, uh, both, both middle schools for that aspect. But it's easy to see in the community the new STEM school that was built and all that's going on. But it's important to remember that a lot of the schools are all having the same types of changes to the curriculum and, and education going on. So it's exciting to hear about that as well. Uh, appreciate all the kind words for recognition month here for the board. I have to be awesome <laughs> cards from fourth graders at Seabrook, am I correct? And, and the pottery, uh, which will go on my desk at work tomorrow. Uh, we'll see how long we keep the staff like, or full of candy, but we'll make an attempt. Um, I will say, I've learned so much in my four years on the board of how much goes on in this community with people giving back and how much time they, <clears throat> they donate. Time and materials 
it's my honor to be able to work on the board like this and give back to the community with so much that goes on in the city. That's all I have Thanks, for the night. I would also like to say thank you um, to everyone. It's a privilege to serve on this board and have the support of the community and the staff and the administration. And I couldn't choose a uh, more self-fulfilling um, way to volunteer and give back. My five are all graduated and gone, but uh, two are teachers. And, and uh, education is a legacy in our family. And it's a priv it really is an honor to, to be a part of that. Uh, and thank you for the cards and the, and the dish. I think I have a bag of peanut M&Ms at home waiting for, <laughs> for my, uh, my dish. And the cards are wonderful. And uh, to Mrs. Schaefer, to use glitter, I am very impressed <laughs> because many teachers will not allow glitter in the classroom. So that says a lot about um, your teaching style. Next uh, year, no glitter. <laughs> no. After they reduce I'll it. take some home with me. Uh, congratulations to the shining stars, Renee and Jody. Once again, it shows uh, all the wonderful people that make our schools run um, that are oftentimes behind the scenes, and we don't know what they do every day. And um, I think that's it. I will look forward to delivering the books. I always enjoy that every year. So, And thank you, Mark, for the donation. I think that's exciting with the robotics. It's always fun. I've been able to attend a couple of the competitions, and I don't understand a lot of it, but it sure is fun. And then with the, the presentation tonight, I was thinking how fortunate we are to be in a community where the Dows have shared so much of their history and success with us. Uh, several years ago, we were out at Taliesin West, which is Frank Lloyd's right home, out outside Phoenix. It's out in the desert. It's isolated. Um, you could take tours, but um, uh, Dow studied under F Frank Lloyd Wright, and so I was not aware out there that they, you know, you go on these expensive tours. I don't know that they reach out to their community and their schools like Mr. Dow and his wife have done here. So, uh, and I just love every time I go in there. So I'm going to go some more. I think I'll go visit some of those classes. Thank you. All right. Well. First of all, thank you to everyone who so generously made us cards and gave us gifts and the books that are going to go in the library. I love that. I know a few years ago my neighbor across the street had texted me because her son had brought home one from um, the library that had my name in it. So um, he was excited about that. And Mark, thank you so much for the donation to robotics. I love that program. I know last year I had the opportunity to be a judge and it was a phenomenal <laughs> experience. Um, just seeing the passion that all the kids have. And I saw, I think it was in the newsletter today, right? They just announced this year's um, challenge. So um, that should be exciting to see that again. I think it's going to be here at Dow High. It's the 22nd through the 24th of uh, March will be this year's competition that's held at Dow High. So lots of, lots of um, excitement there. And then, um, as today I turned over the gavel to Pam, I want to thank the whole board for the trust you put in me the last two years to serve as president. Um, it's been an honor to serve as president, and I wish you the best. Hey, thank you. That position, and I'm here to help. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. Brad? Thanks, Angela, for your service. <laughs> Thanks. And thank you for the rest of the board members. I uh, have to thank Charles J. Strosacker and Roland M. Gerstacker Foundations for their wonderful donation and their, and their belief in our STEM curriculum and how we're moving it forward. Thank you, Mark, for your gifts. Appreciate that very much. Uh, Craig and Marilyn, Sammy, Ava did a wonderful job. Uh, I was not aware of how many different programs were going on there. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Um, again, if you're just tuning in, they have an open house for their uh, writing workshop, 4.30 to 6 on Wednesday, this oh, Wednesday. It's the theory of knowledge. Theory, theory of knowledge, knowledge. that's yeah. right. Sorry, theory of knowledge. On this Wednesday, 4.30 to 6. Um, and then also the Christy, Jennifer, Carmen, and Robin for explaining the MyStar program. And congratulations to them on their successes. Thank you. And their challenges. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> ditto, 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 ditto. <laughs> yeah. Yep, thank you. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> oh, very good, very good. Um, I wanted to express thanks uh, to the kids in the schools for uh, giving us gifts and cards and just reaching out to us and, uh, and the teachers as well. So appreciate that. And Angela, for your leadership the last two years has thanks. been wonderful. So you did a fabulous job. And, and um, I hope I can uh, uh, follow in your footsteps. So and thank you, Kevin. Hi. Uh, we've got the president of the ESA board out here that came to listen to us tonight. And um, we had a, a agenda chocked full of exciting um, things and a lot of action, uh, which means there was just a ton of work for the table to my left and to all your supporting cast of educators. So just a, a huge um, shout out to, to all the help to make sure this happens because there's just a ton of work that goes into it. And it's surely appreciated. So. Mike, I'll turn it over to you. I'm going to be brief as we're, we're setting some length tonight. But um, we toured uh, a few board members tonight um, through the new additions to Plummer Hill Woodcrest and into the um, old gymnasiums that are now being converted as well. And so they got a good, good example. You can see those buildings are getting closer and closer by the day to be completed and soon to come Chestnut Hill and see where getting going. I wrote to you last week about the revenue consensus. Um, first one, the second one's a little more accurate, a little better. Um, some good news, but not nearly as good as uh, maybe was predicted a few years ago. The growth isn't as far. School aid fund is still growing better than the general fund. Um, and so that's good news. We have to keep our eye on the ball because, as you know, sometimes the school aid fund is creatively used to offset any cost in the general fund. And so we would like to prevent that the best we can to make sure we see um, some kind of foundation increase as we go forward. Um, we're going to battle hard to at least get 2x formula. That means we still only get half of what some of the other districts get, but that, that's probably the most realistic goal. And so I'll be on my um, lobbying train to do so and keep that moving as we go forward. I thought it was interesting and put it in there for you as well that um, enrollment drives how much you get too because the pots, um, but the number of uh, students that actually is spearheaded at four and that it is um, decreasing but the decrease was entirely in the charter school area. So public schools are, are doing very well um, as we go forward, including ourselves. Um, I sent you our plan of work superintendent goals for the year. Same process as last year, so we should get a little more veteran this year and work on some of those things and the process and timeline going forward to get better and better as we go, as we got through year one of the evaluations under the new system. Um, Plymouth Woodcrest, I talked about series one by me bond uh, finance report so we're getting close um, to that will be done in a short period of time and so we're going to bring you an up-to-date um, next month on where we stand and it's good news and so we are under that budget but um, it's not money we should spend because you just never know what the future comes you, you, when you finally get to the end of a bond project series one two and three um, you can you may add some additional product um, projects on as you go that fit under the scope of the original bond language, but we want to wait to the very end on that piece of it. Um, teacher Retirement Health Care Fund, our, our employees are probably excited that they're getting some money returned, um, but there is a lot of work still to be done. Most likely we're going to receive that as a district at the end of January, but there is a lot of pieces still being decided. In fact, it could go back to court because the court has not ruled yet on the plan of how to distribute it. Um, and so <laughs> they, they were the proposed. Good news, but. Yes, OR, or <laughs> Got wait retirement on that services <laughs> will make the <laughs> plan on how to distribute to the individual employees from there. So some of those, like Mary and I, who are probably anxiously <laughs> waiting that check, uh, I want to caution it could be a little while before you get that still as you go forward. And there are some tax implications about when the tax comes, how it comes out. It's so our business department to stay in tune, working very closely with the school business officials. ORS, Lori is probably on the cutting edge of it actually out there um, on, on how to handle it. But there, it's coming, but stay patient. Mark, tell them stay patient out there. Um, it, 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 there's some steps that have to be taken, you know, even though I think we all thought, heard that January 22nd since at the district, that means I'm going to get it short time after. I don't think that's going to occur. Um, Brian and I, um, this, this past week, as you can probably tell, we were in Florida presenting on um, Central Park <laughs> Elementary School, and I picked up a nasty cold at the same time. I must be the only guy who goes to warm climate and gets sick. But um, it went very, very well. I expect that we'll have a number of 
uh, schools from the, the Midwest Suburban Group coming Turing Center Park. Right. So Brian did, a, Brian did a fantastic job. I'm, he's got a second career in the making. I'm pretty sure I'm presenting curriculum and instruction stuff when he goes. So he made me look good again. So he did a good <laughs> job there. Um, we talked about my stem. Feet of you on the beach <laughs> this year. <laughs> yeah. When I could, I was out there. Brian, Brian isn't like much of a beach guy, but we got him out there some. So. No, last year when you were there, you had a, what did we call school that right. day? Right, that's and what I was referring to. We almost to, yes. did on Friday, well, too. Well, I was going to so say, because it was a risky Friday, and I yeah. wondered. Um, my stem, we mentioned it, and Brian mentioned the dollar amount, and thank you, Penny. She secured $88,784. For that, so that uh, that com will come in very handy as well. Updated emergency procedures. So we've been working with our ESA and, uh, and as a county schools, and we've had a consultant in to update our handbook. We now are ready and comfortable that we're all on the same handbook, all four uh, county schools, and so that's going to be a very good thing going forward. We'll continue to work on some things on that, including po some possible table type exercises where we practice some um, emergency issues coming forward. CMU and MPS partnership with intern teachers, and so Brian has been working with the group over there and made a contact where we're getting an opportunity to bring in um, intern teachers into our school district um, and show off Central Park Elementary. Along the way, there's a benefit there, but also that we get a chance to maybe make contact with these people and hire them. <laughs> As you know, it's getting tougher and tougher, and so we want to stay proactive in our hiring processes. So there's many bonuses to that, and plus, you know, we can partner with, with Chippewas. We're pretty happy. Brad and I would agree with that piece of it. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, diversity is good sometimes. <clears throat> and we did the building tours tonight. We we're excited about seeing that as well. And that's Absolutely. all I have for you. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. Support. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, adjourn.